my mind still goes, oh shit. Like the survival thing kicks in, the stress response takes over, and that's the point of this. You are putting yourself in a situation where your mind, body, and spirit know, holy shit, this is gonna be cold. Alarm, 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 alarm. And then, here's what happens. Do the movement, do the thing. How are you? It's your buddy Mel Robbins. Welcome to Southern Vermont where the sun is shining and the snow is not falling. Um, we might have to adjust the angle on this as we go. I decided to go live with you right now uh, for a very particular reason. On Sunday, there was a really big article in the New York Times in their wellness section and the article was about uh, mental health and what research is saying about the benefits of something called cold exposure therapy. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about. I was featured in the article. I was the person that they quoted uh, about cold exposure or ice baths or polar plunges. Um, and I then posted a, uh, a video of myself uh, climbing into a barrel full of ice here in southern Vermont and sitting in it and breathing as I sat in the barrel. My husband posted a video on his Instagram account, which is Soul Degree, and the thing exploded. Uh, more than a million views on the video in the barrel, and more importantly, y'all had so many questions, it was unbelievable. And so I wanted to just jump on and use this video to tell you all the reasons, well, first of all, what is cold exposure therapy? Secondly, how did I discover it? Why did I start doing it? What, how do I do it? And what are the benefits that I've experienced? Now, before we get started, couple rules about this video. Number one, I'm not a doctor and I'm not recommending uh, that you try this. I'm not diagnosing you with anything. I am simply a woman on a mission to live a life that I love and to uh, truly find ways to be more at ease, to have more fun, to feel more joy, to feel freer and all change that you create in your life really happens from the inside out. And so everything that I'm about to share with you is just my personal experience. And as you know, nothing brings me greater joy than sharing my struggles with you and also sharing the very simple, believable, actionable things that you can do in order to change your life or change some aspect of your life for the better. So that's the context of this video. So let's just jump into what the hell is cold exposure therapy and why are people all over social media and online and friends of mine sitting in tubs of ice? What the hell is going on? Well, so cold exposure therapy is, uh, this is just my layman's way of explaining it. Cold exposure therapy is when you, in a safe way, you expose yourself to cold or freezing temperatures, and you do so because you are interested in either treating health conditions based on the cold exposure, or because you want that cold exposure to stimulate some kind of health benefit. Um, that's what cold exposure is. You know, I grew up in Western Michigan and I remember every single winter, usually on New Year's Day, there would be a whole crowd of people that would go out to Lake Michigan and they would cut a hole in the ice if the kind of the shoreline had frozen over and people would jump into the frozen water. I did it several times. The idea was to jump in and get out. Nobody jumped in and hung out back then in the 1970s and early 80s. We just kind of jumped in like a dare. Typically, we were raising money for the local fire department or something, and then we would all jump out and wrap ourselves in sleeping bags. And so that was my uh, sort of introduction to the cold plunge. 
Well, more recently, uh, as I have been really interested in learning more about healing trauma and learning more about the various modalities, that's a fancy word for kind of methods, the various modalities for um, quieting the mind, practicing discipline, lowering stress, uh, finding what I will call I don't know if the right word is like homeostasis, but I have always been somebody who has been really emotional, like the ups and the downs and the ups and the downs. And the only solace that I had is kind of knowing that whatever comes up ultimately comes down. And if something's really down, eventually it'll come back up. But I really didn't have a strong center. And I'm not talking about abs. I'm talking about a strong emotional center. And if you are somebody and raise your hand or, uh, you know, give a comment in the below, if you are somebody that feels like you are easily triggered, that you feel like you're on edge all the time, or that you feel like you're waiting for the next shoe to drop, if you're somebody that has experienced trauma, or heartbreak and you can kind of feel it in your nervous system like it's almost like it's really hard for you to turn off this sense that inside your body your nervous system is just on edge you can't quite catch a break well that's how I felt my whole life I have literally felt like I am just wired in a way that I'm triggered easily, that I get emotional easily, that I feel stressed all the time, that I snap when I don't want to snap at my kids or my husband, that I can quickly start spiraling in terms of my thoughts. And while I've done tons of things to address the anxiety uh, from the five second rule that I invented, and reprogramming my mind to going to therapy, to taking medication, that I'd never really addressed what I am starting to believe is the core problem for all of us, which is your nervous system is always in a state of high alert. And I personally believe, this is not a medical opinion, this is just a 53-year-old best-selling author's opinion who has researched this for the past five years, my personal opinion is that almost all mental health issues and all issues that you are facing, whether it's with habits or emotion or whatever, I personally believe that everything comes back to whether or not you have what psychologists and researchers call a regulated nervous system. You have two nervous systems, everybody. You have a nervous system that is your fight or flight nervous system. How many of you are aware of this? You know, yep, I know that Mal, I've got a fight or flight nervous system. Your fight or flight nervous system is really important because that sucker turns on whenever there's something that's threatening to you. It turns on when you gotta survive. It turns on when you have to pay attention. So believe it or not, your fight or flight nervous system turns on when, again, you're threatened it turns on when you need to concentrate. So if you take a test and it's really important to you, whether that's the SAT or the Series 7 or the medical uh, school entrance exam, if you're about to take a test, if you don't know how to come to center and stay calm, your fight or flight nervous system will take over and you will start to feel nervous and your nervous system will put you on edge and what that fight or flight nervous system is doing is it is making you hyper aware of everything around you. And it is designed to do that because your fight or flight nervous system is something that is supposed to be protecting you. And when that fight or flight nervous system turns on, you only have a few choices. You either freeze, right? Or you run, right? Or you fight. Like, so you can tense up and snap at people or fight or get aggressive, or you completely possum and freeze when that threat happens. A lot of you go very quiet when you're threatened, or you run. I was a runner. 
I think I've been running my whole life. Just if, if I'm moving, nobody can catch me. Here's the problem with your fight or flight nervous system. It's only supposed to turn on when there's an actual threat. <laughs> and how many of you feel like me, that especially after the pandemic, it feels like you're never not on edge. It feels like somebody flipped that fight or flight nervous system on and I don't know how the hell to flip it off. And what we're gonna talk about today, at least from my personal experience, because I have been doing so much research about regulating your nervous system, which means having the ability to have your nervous system go into a fight or flight mode, but then have the ability to regulate it and flip the switch and turn off fight or flight and turn on what is called your parasympathetic nervous system, which is your calm, resting, grounded nervous system. And I see so many of you in the comments saying, this is me, Mel. I have ADHD and I'm always on edge. After the pandemic, I've been on edge. I've lost somebody I love, I'm on edge. With this working remote thing, it is fucking with my head. Like I am on edge all the time. My kids are this way. I feel like I've lost this sense of control. And the truth is you have, because what you've lost control of is your ability to flip the sympathetic or fight or flight nervous system off and flip on the resting nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system, and bring yourself back to center. And so one of the things that caught my attention about cold exposure therapy and all of these people, particularly Wim Hof, that I was watching online uh, sit in ice baths or swim in frozen rivers or lay down in the snow, one of the things that caught my attention is that there are a lot of research studies that have shown that when you do cold exposure therapy in a very safe way, which I'm gonna explain what I do, and again, I'm not a doctor, um, that it has a tremendous impact on your ability to go from stressed to calming yourself down, to go from the sympathetic or fight or flight nervous system being activated to you being able to find your center and flip on the parasympathetic resting calm center. This is also something you probably experience if you do yoga, if you take walks in nature, if you chant, if you uh, have journaling methods, if you meditate, you're bringing yourself back to center. And so I was very interested in cold exposure therapy, the Wim Hof method in particular, because there was so much being written about its impact on being able to flip off fight or flight and learn how to regulate your nervous system. So that's number one. Number two, I was also very interested in it because from a common sense perspective, it makes sense to me. And I think if you followed me for a while, you know I'm a really pragmatic person. I like to understand why things work. I'm not that fancy of a person, but it makes a lot of sense to me that if you put yourself in a really stressful situation that is medically safe for you, and I don't know if this is medically safe for you, I know it is medically safe for me, that is a question that you should ask your doctor if after watching this and researching it for yourself, it's something that you wanna try. But from a common sense perspective, if you're tired of snapping at your kids and feeling stressed out and feeling like you're losing control, and if you wish that you weren't so reactive and you wish that you could not be triggered by everything going around around you doesn't it make sense that it's a muscle that you got to build to not react doesn't it make sense that just like you got to build a bicep muscle and make it strong through rep repetition that if you're going to build a muscle of not reacting to stressful situations not losing your cool not having a panic attack not having a stress response, but literally being able to feel your stress rise up and know how to recenter yourself and stay in control so you can stay grounded in your values. Doesn't it make sense that if you wanna learn that as a skill, that it would probably help to put yourself in a stressful situation that's safe and use that as a way to train yourself to go from super stressed out through your breathing and through your mindset into a state of being calm. That's exactly in a nutshell, in a common sense way, everybody, 
what cold exposure, cold plunge ice baths are doing. It is a controlled setting for you to put your body in what your body believes is a life-threatening situation. And in that moment, in that ice bath, through your breath, gain control of your body's survival response and your racing thoughts and bring yourself in that threatening stressful environment to a state of calm. That's what this is. That's what this is. And again, I got to say this again. If you are going to climb in 59 degrees of water, which is what the experts recommend and what research shows here in Vermont, I think the water I'm climbing into is more like 34 degrees because we have to chip the ice off the top before we can climb into it. But if you're going to climb into water that's below 59 degrees, please ask your doctor. Uh, there is a lot of science, by the way. Google the New York Times article. They link to a bunch of the studies. Uh, there's also a podcast that uh, Huberman, a professor at Stanford Huberman Lab, does that uh, they recently talked all about this and he talked a lot about the studies. I am only gonna talk about my personal experience. And then I'm gonna ask you questions. So uh, the way that I learned how to do this, I didn't just jump in a river. I found a weekend uh, four hour workshop uh, on the Wim Hof method. My husband and two friends of ours went uh, and we drove a couple hours from Vermont. We went to this uh, workshop we learned the breathing technique. We did a bunch of meditation and then we climbed literally into a chest freezer that was filled with ice water on somebody's deck. Not a glamorous thing that you're doing here, but something that anybody can do. If you can't get to a uh, workshop, watch a bunch of videos online. There's so much information out there all about this. If you're a fan of Goop, uh, they did, uh, as part of their first season on Netflix, you can watch an entire episode where Wim Hof walks everybody through the method on Netflix. So much information out there that's free, so educate yourself. We did this experience. It was incredible, absolutely incredible. And so ever since then, uh, Chris and I, uh, my husband Chris and I have turned it into a hobby and then we've incorporated it into uh, our daily habit. So. Now I'm going to take any questions that you have. Uh, let me talk about the benefits that I have personally seen by making it a habit as part of my routine to submerge myself in a uh, ice bath. Okay. Number one, I was really worried about doing it. Well, well number one, I've seen a significant improvement in my circulation and in my, uh, uh, this, this disorder that I have called Raynaud's. Raynaud's is a circulatory issue where I literally, you guys, had such bad circulation that if I go grocery shopping and I would pull something out of the freezer, my hands would turn white. By the time I was 50, I would keep a pair of gloves with me when I would go to the grocery store and I would wear gloves when I go into the refrigerator or the freezer section because my hands would get so cold. And so I was really scared to try this cold exposure because I thought it would make my Raynaud's way worse. And the truth is, after just a month of really doing this regularly, my Raynaud's is way better. It's incredible. Um, I was scared to put my hands under the water because I wanted to keep them up because I was so worried about it. I mean, if you take ice cream out of the freezer section in a grocery store, why would you, and, and my hands are literally so numb, I'm having to do this and then they're tingly. Why on earth would I stick them into cold water? Well, here's what the research suggests. The research suggests that controlled and safe exposure to cold temperatures stimulates the growth of what they call brown fat cells. I'm not an expert in this. I'm just telling you what I've read in the research studies and what I've experienced for myself. And the brown fat cells apparently are what are helping with uh, circulation, inflammation, and um, uh, insulation. And so I have noticed a very big change in terms of the Raynaud's not being as severe and me not feeling as stiff and not having my hands go numb. So that's number one. Number two, 
um, I feel significantly less stressed. Number three, I used to be somebody who would get triggered emotionally all the time. And then I would stay in that triggered state for a while. Like if I went up and was really reactive, it would take me a while to work it out of my system. I, after practicing and adding uh, cold exposure to my routine for about a month, it's freaking unbelievable, you guys. Um, I have a real physical sense of where my grounded resting center is. So anytime I get wildly triggered emotionally, I can feel it. And nine times out of 10, I am able to literally close my eyes, take a deep breath in my nose, blow it out of my nose, and I'm back in my center. It's pretty extraordinary. The other thing that I've noticed is I sleep so much more soundly. I think that sort of elevated shock to the system and like, I don't know if you're burning calories. I don't know if it's just like mental energy burn, but I have a much, I fall asleep faster. It's a much deeper sleep. Uh, and that's been a pretty remarkable thing too. But the real thing that, that has, has helped that, that I've, I've just noticed is that I just feel more in control, literally. I mean, if I've trained myself to climb into a barrel of ice, which never gets any easier, by the way, I don't care that I've done this dozens of times. Every time I pull off my sweatshirt and I've got my tights or my bathing suit on and I'm about to block off the ice, and pull it out, I think, what the hell am I doing? Why am I doing this? And I start to feel that panicked, nervous response. I start to feel my sympathetic nervous system, the fight or flight, kick in. Why does that happen? Well, because 34 degree water, 59 degree water, it's freaking freezing. If you stay in it too long, you would die. If you sit there for too long and you don't do it in a safe way with somebody watching and being able to get back inside pretty quickly, you're going to get hyperthermia. Your body knows it's a threat and it's always going to be a threat. And so anytime you get in cold water, how many of you have jumped into a really cold pool even or the ocean in the summer? You're like, oh my God. Or like, you know how we go into the ocean in the summer and it's like, at least we do in Rhode Island where you like dip your toe in and you're like, oh my God. And you're like, don't splash me, don't splash me. And we all know that you should just dive in and get it over with, right? But we're like, oh, 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 as you wade in. Okay, I'm going on it. Oh, my God. And then you're like, okay, I'm better. So this is the same way every single time you do it. And so you are putting yourself in a situation where your mind, body, and spirit know, holy shit, this is going to be cold. Alarm, 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 alarm. You climb in. And your body's like, alarm, alarm, what the hell? Get out, get out, get out. And then you take your deep breath, blow it down, and then you sit down. And then here's what happens. The second I'm shoulder deep in the water, <coughs> I'm going to take a sip of lukewarm water now. The second that I'm in that cold water, what happens is the very first time I did this, I had this experience uh, that, that I can only describe. The only other time I had this same experience where I'm like, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't do this, was in the middle of childbirth. There was a moment before the epidural kicked in with our first child where the pain was so overwhelming and my mind started spinning and my nervous system just flooded with alarm bells. I'm like, I'm not going to live through, I can't handle this. I can't handle this. I can't handle it. And like it, the thinking, I can't handle this. I can't handle this. I can't, it made it worse. It made it worse. And in fact, when we cut this together, I'm going to like cut in right now for YouTube, the video of the first time that I did it so that you can see what it was like. Welcome to Vermont. We're about to do the cold plunge. Check this out. Holy oh, this is like, I grew up on a lake in Michigan. 
This is like ice fishing. You gotta break it all the way to the thick part. All right, of the this is outside. your holy sh. Oh my. You got this. Girl. Okay, I got this. Okay. I step in, and then I go. Oh my god, it's deep. You got this. Deep breaths. Okay, this is enough. <laughs> oh, this is so big, I can't get out. <sighs> but the interesting thing is that every time I get into that barrel, even though I know it's coming, even though I know I can breathe my way in there for 30 seconds to a minute, depending upon the day, sometimes even longer, my mind still goes, oh shit. Like the survival thing kicks in, the stress response takes over, and that's the point of this. You're putting yourself in a situation where your body's automatic wiring will sound a five alarm signal. Your thoughts will start to go, no, 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 no. And you are now in a situation where you have an opportunity from the inside out to take control of this moment, to quiet your thoughts and to settle your body and literally flip off the alarm and flip on the parasympathetic nervous system, which will make you feel more centered. Now, I've got people asking me how long I've been doing it. I, I literally took this workshop back in December, so that was two and a half months ago. And for Christmas, I bought my husband this big plastic barrel for us to uh, do it. When we first got the barrel, we filled it up here in Southern Vermont, so you can see the mountains behind me. And uh, we did it almost every day for a week, and then the damn thing uh, actually froze solid. <laughs> And uh, ironically, uh, what we did then is we filled up a bathtub upstairs and the bathtub we just filled with cold water and that was cold enough. And um, it's only recently that the weather here in Vermont has been so screwy this winter that it was warm enough that the thing started to thaw. So we like tipped it over, got all the ice out and then just refilled it this weekend. And so this will be the third day. I'm going to do a, a, a plunge right after I'm done doing this broadcast. This will be the third day in a row that I've done it. But we've been uh, experimenting with this basically since December. And the results are pretty remarkable, honestly. Um, really, really cool. Um, you know, I, I also feel that it is one of the things that is helping me with healing stored trauma from childhood trauma. And the reason why um, this is helpful is for all the reasons that I have explained. You know, trauma gets encoded in your nervous system and can get triggered by just about, you know, anything because it's already uh, encoding that is in your nervous system and your neural pathways. And so when you start to develop a, a skill of self-awareness that is so deep and internal that you feel the trigger coming, and you are able through your breathing and your mindset to pull yourself back to center and flip off the alarm and have a different response, that is when you are now learning a skill of choosing how to respond to situations instead of letting your anxiety or your trauma or whatever it is that has been programmed into you by your life experiences determine how you react for you. Um, super, super, super cool. I'm going to take a bunch of questions now. So, Jesse, what do we got for questions? How often do you recommend doing it? How often do you recommend doing it? Um, again, I'm not a doctor, but Chris, is Chris here? Is Dad here? Yeah. How often do you do this, Chris? Oh, my God, I'm overheating in the sun. Are you live right now? I'm live right now. Oh, okay. How often do you do cold exposure every day? Come on in, honey. I like to do it every day if I can. Everybody, Chris Robbins. There's his face. Okay. Here, here, sit down real quick. He's better at this than me. He lasts a lot longer than I last. 
on this. Um, oh my God, I am overheating. Woo! Um, so, uh, oh, and our dog Yolo is here too. It's a, it's a family thing. Um, so, uh, here, hop in. So we're answering people's questions about cold exposure and why we do it. I've, I've explained in the last 30 minutes um, kind of how we got exposed to it, how we started. Um, and Jesse here, who is off camera, is asking the question. So Chris likes to do it every single day. Um, I Now that our barrel has thawed out, uh, this will be my third day in the row. I like doing it after... Um, I work out. It's kind of like a nice end cap to a workout. Plus, whatever you're wearing, you want to strip off anyway, and so that's a good thing. There, somebody just asked, who's the motivator to do it? Uh, I would say my fear is the oh. motivator. Uh, what do you mean your fear? Meaning that I'm afraid. I don't want to go do it. I, I uh, There's always hesitation, and so it's the it's the talk about cold exposure i am the, freaking overheating right now it is the fear oh. of the discomfort that is the motivator to move through it and just do it yes it, I, I am literally so warm right now i need a little cold exposure at the moment um so uh, i also think that the answer to how often you do it is a little bit relative to you where you are in climate so like for us in winter, it's just easier to hit it as frequently as you can during the winter, but in the dead of summer to have to look go- Look up here so you look at people. To have to go source, uh, you know, bags of ice in July and August to keep the water cold. Uh, that sounds- Oh, that's to, true. Sounds to me like a hassle. So, you know, if you live in a super warm climate, um, it does make it a little more challenging unless you're willing to invest in um, i know that there's technology out there that keeps the water cold but for those of you taking the more organic approach to buying bags of ice it's can be a little problematic in july and august except chris ran a bath tub full of cold water and it was still really cold so, um, you know, that worked pretty well. I see a lot of you, you know, for those of you who say, I feel like my heart's gonna stop, you need to talk to a doctor before you climb into this because um, you don't wanna put yourself in a shocking situation if you are not medically uh, strong enough to do so. And so, um, because it is shocking, you get in and you feel like your heart is like about to stop and your mind is completely spinning. I see a ton of questions about cold showers. And the, the research studies and lots of the experts talk about how, yes, you can practice cold exposure therapy by taking a cold shower. My personal experience, I fucking hate that. Like, I hate that. That is more miserable to me than standing in, than sitting in an ice barrel. Even though the ice barrel is colder, and all over my body. And the reason why is it's, because it's like, like, water the, torture. like water shower <laughs> darts of cold water, it's like hitting my head and my shoulder and I just can't get immersed in it. And, and it just like everything about it isn't like fear, it's hatred. So for those of you that can do simulate this by standing in a cold shower, I bow to you because that takes some unbelievable discipline. Now, one of the things that I do do though, having just trashed that, is ever since we took that workshop back in uh, New York on this, I end every shower with cold water. And I will stand under that cold water after I've taken my shower for maybe 15 to 30 seconds. Um, just to kind of seal it. Uh, it doesn't feel quite the same, but just to uh, have a wave of hatred wash over you <laughs> i can't start the shower cold like i just can't do that because i can't get my whole body cold it just feels like i'm torturing my shoulder i don't i don't like that um go ahead what's our next how question how long do you do it for so the question was how long do i uh do it i am working up again this is a muscle to two minutes and i do think it has a lot to do with climate when it is howling here 
and, and dark outside and 12 degrees, the last thing I want to do is climb into a barrel of ice. A day like today where the sun is out and I've actually opened the window because I'm overheating as we make this video, I'm looking forward to climbing into that barrel. And I think if you start out warm, you probably last. But if you can get in there and you can... and just focus on your breathing in your nose, out your nose. It's pretty unbelievable. Did you get in today? Not yet. Oh. I was waiting to, well, till Jesse was here so we could film it. What's the warm up theory with it? Oh, oh, oh. So a lot of you have also asked when you're done, are you leaving? I'm out of here. Why? What, do you still need me? Dude, <laughs> you, how long do you last? You last like two minutes. I don't know that I've gotten to two minutes quite yet, but that's a good goal. They say that the medical benefit or the, the physical benefit runs out after five minutes. So Why the hell would you stay in this for five minutes? That's just a flex. No, that's a question that Honestly, people had for me is like, you you know, how long should you do it? And when does hypothermia set in? And I think the bottom line is after four or five minutes, feel free to get out. And that question, what's the minimum? I mean... There is no real minimum except that the first 30 to 45 seconds are the most uncomfortable and it's only after that time terrifying once, once you really like start to get into your breath that you start to realize wow hey i can do this so after you get past a minute uh that's when as much as it sounds crazy it feels better than the first minute <laughs> so I have a different take than Chris I think that the minimum that uh, that works for me is as quickly as I can get myself into from oh fuck to oh I'm gonna be okay and that's about 20 seconds at this point and then I'm okay for about another 20 seconds. I'm breathing in, breathing out. But as I approach that minute mark, I'm literally like, this is cold. Like, why am I sitting here? I'm calm now. And I start to feel agitated again. So I think in the beginning for me, being in there 20 to 30 seconds was plenty to get to that point where you were really freaking out and bringing yourself to calm. And now I think I have another level of breakthrough, which is to try to get over that second hurdle where I'm approaching a minute and I just don't like it because it's cold. And now my mind is bitching about how it's cold. And so when I get to that, I need to kind of breathe through it a little bit longer, I think. That's what I'm realizing in this conversation. Hi, Oak. Hello. Um, Another question for you. Is it different than cryotherapy? Uh, is it different than cryotherapy? I have no idea. I have never done cryotherapy, but I would imagine the benefits are the same. And if you're doing cryotherapy, you're being supervised with medical professionals. Is so it that's cryotherapy what, what you did in Cleveland? Where you climb into that bag? Is it oh, no, no. That's, um, Chris is talking about something I did after surgery. That's the oxygen uh, oh, uh, uh, chamber, oxygen chamber. Oh. Um, so I bet a bunch of you are curious, how do you set up? What do you do? What equipment do you do? Yes, he went, don't, don't. Quiet. Don't, just tell him quiet, please, okay? <laughs> please, don't, don't. He, he barks at the neighbors and we're staying at my mother-in-law's house and it's 65 and up and not anything against anybody who is that age, but people get really upset when our dog is barking or when he, you know, like we got rules here. So um, anyway, uh, oh, the setup. So we have a barrel downstairs and it's a big plastic barrel and there's a step stool in it. Really important that rule number one, that you have somebody with you because if you do go into shock or if you can't get out of the barrel or just, you know, if something happens, you just want somebody there to help you. Uh, number two, I don't really time it. Um, I think Chris times his, but I've always got Chris there or our son Oakley there. And so I kind of have a general idea um, based on the fact that somebody else is there, uh, but you can time it. Uh, third, the breathing technique. I breathe in through my nose for about eight seconds and then out through my nose for eight seconds. In through my nose for eight seconds, out through my nose for eight seconds. Um, and 
I find that if Chris or Oakley are there, it really helps if they're like, good job, mom, way to go, Mel. But if I start talking, I lose focus and my mind starts to race again. If I look around or if I start getting concerned about how much time has passed, my heart rate increases and I start feeling stressed out again. And so it's really important when I do it personally that I just focus on the breathing in and out of the nose. If I start to panic or feel stressed, I come back to the breathing in and out of the nose. And um, I now, instead of going shit shit, oh my, blah, 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 I just go, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. A little bit longer. I can do this. And it's just been awesome. Uh, any other questions, everybody? No other questions? Excellent. Uh, I see that we have posted the New York Times article. Um, I, uh, let's see, what else? Uh, any other questions? Polar plunges, yep, yep, yep. I think you'd be surprised, everybody, at, at what a big difference it makes if it's medically safe for you to do so. And again, uh, no, I never get sick after an ice bath. Oh, what do you do when you get out? Okay, so when you get out, you're soaking wet and your skin looks like basically a tomato. Uh, it, you will literally look almost blistered. You're gonna be so like, if you have pale skin like me, reddish. If you have more, uh, you know, uh, pigment in your skin, uh, even you're going to feel like you're glowing a little bit, radiate a little bit. Why? Because the blood is rushing to your extremities to try to keep you from dying. And so what they recommend, at least at Wim Hof, is that you get into a squat like horse stance where you bring, uh, you engage your muscles in your quads and that um, helps warm your quads. And then you put your arms together and you kind of do this torso swinging motion, which again, helps you bring the blood kind of everywhere and helps you start to warm up your body. There are lots of experts that say, don't quickly get on a towel, don't quickly uh, you know, strip off your clothes, allow yourself to start to experience the heat that your body creates. And I haven't done that here in Vermont, but when we were at the workshop, I went first because I was, I knew that if I watched everybody else do it, I'd get super, super nervous watching everybody do it. So I just jumped in and did it. And here's the interesting thing. The wind was howling. It was like 40 degrees that day. I stood out on this dude's deck and watched about eight people climb into an ice chest full of ice water. And I stood there in a bathing suit and I wasn't cold at all because it, going through something like that and breathing through it and the amount of adrenaline and the internal chemicals that start ripping through you, you feel so warm and alive and vibrant and just like you just grabbed life by the, 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 the whatever and took a slug. I don't even know if that's a good metaphor, but you just feel, wow. And that, that again, radiates from the inside out. It's like so damn cool. Do we have any other questions, everybody? Any other questions? Fresh or salt water? I don't think it matters. Uh, does it uh, do something? Mel breathing excessive triggers my panic attacks. Then grace, um, you're not breathing in a way that will calm your panic attacks. Stop with the mouth breathing. <gasps> you don't want to do that. It would probably help for you to take a breathing uh, workshop. And I know that part of the methodology with Wim Hof is to do a certain style of breathing. Does this help with depression, anxiety? Um, according to the research, Yes, it does. Um, you know, it's really exciting because I think for so long, there were all kinds of really amazing modalities out there like cold therapy, uh, guided psychedelic uh, treatments under the uh, supervision of a therapist, um, uh, um, yoga, uh, treating your gut because your gut is what's called the second brain and it's connected uh, 
to your brain uh, through neurotransmitters. And so uh, all of these new modalities that were once poo-pooed upon are now becoming not only FDA approved, but they're being studied and researched and validated. And so, yes, 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 yes. I can't explain why, but yes, studies are starting to show that this is extraordinarily encouraging when it comes to depression, PTSD. Um, and I personally notice that it is very helpful with anxiety because again, anxiety is living in a state where you feel like something's gonna go wrong. Anxiety is living with a nervous system that feels dysregulated. Anxiety is when your thoughts are focused on what's about to happen. And the only way that you're going to be able to sit in an ice bath and breathe your way through it is if you pull yourself into the moment and you learn how to flip off that fight or flight nervous system and flip on the parasympathetic nervous system, which is your resting, calm, centered nervous system and state. And through breathing, take control of the racing thoughts that are making you think you're about to die, which is something in the future, not right now. And bringing you into this moment saying, it's okay. Right now I'm okay. I'm okay. Uh, I go up to my neck. Yep, I've not gotten my hair wet yet. Um, in the beginning, there is no warm up other than avoidance and thinking about it and wondering if I should do it and uh, breaking the ice off on the uh, cold days. Um, what else? Do I dunk? Nope, don't dunk. Uh, I think I think that's it. Oh, cold tub water. Yeah, you don't need ice. Honestly, the cold water in your tap is cold enough. They're saying in the studies that I looked at, a lot of the studies are looking at 59 degrees in terms of the water. You don't have to have ice in it. Ice like kind of takes it up to the edge, but just cold water was really cold when Chris uh, filled our bathtub up the other day. Why don't we go down and uh, I'm gonna do this. Oak, you coming to help to medically supervise? I hurt my hip dancing, so this is not from the cold plunge. Um, so we're gonna go downstairs here in Southern Vermont. Come on, y'all. Okay, now as I'm about, I know what's coming. I'm about to get in an ice cold barrel. And so my heart is starting to race. And what happens when you're nervous? Anybody, anybody before a test, before a speech? You got to pee. <laughs> and so I got to pee. I got to pee because uh, there's actually a bio, there's a, there's a, uh, there's an interesting reason why you always have to pee before a speech, a presentation, a date, an interview, an ice plunge, or uh, a race. The reason why is when your fight or flight nervous system flips on, it flips on because your mind, body, and spirit perceive that there's a threat, that you're about to do something, he's ready. You're about to do something that is gonna threaten you. And so back in the day, our ancestors, if they were out hunting and all of a sudden an elk or a tiger or somebody like came at them, you have to run. So one of the reasons why if you get a low level threat, you immediately have to pee is because your body, the second it starts to feel like something is gonna happen, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, it gets ready to run, it gets ready to freeze, or it gets ready to fight. Now, if you gotta run or fight, do you need a full bladder? No, it's gonna slow you down. And so if it's a low level threat, your body's like, we gotta get ready. Get rid of that urine in the bladder, man, because if you gotta run, we don't wanna be hanging on to that. That's why that happens. Honest to God, it is your uh, sympathetic nervous system flipping on, putting you into a state of alert saying, hey, everybody get ready, we're about to do something, get rid of the urine. Let's go. So I'm going to go do that right now. You're not coming in with me. No. I'll be right back. Oh, hello. You're still here. Okay. So before I take my shirt off, let me show you the setup. Um, okay. He loves this. YOLO, you ready to do an ice punch? You are not my medical supervisor though. Okay. So come on out. So this is our barrel. I bought this for Chris for Christmas. It is actually a beautiful day here. Um, 
which it hasn't been for a while. So I'm kind of excited to do this because I'm not freezing. The wind isn't howling. Um, and so here's our lid. Oh, take the lid off. Now, the shit's still cold. I mean, there is ice in here. And you know who loves ice? Yellow. Here, bud. <laughs> okay, so there's no real uh, method. I'm going to take my shoes off. Are you going to get in there, Oak? No. Why not? Oak stands here just as a judgy teenager. Um, no. Okay, so I'm going to take off my shirt. And uh, I'm going to show you what I do. So I, I'm going to climb in here. I'm going to climb in here. And then when you get in, the way that I was taught is you exhale and then you go down. And that's when it starts. And then what you're going to see is sheer panic on my face as my thoughts are like, fuck, 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 fuck. And then I'm going to go and try to just pull my attention into the breathing. And through the breathing and focusing on the breathing, I'm going to be trying to go from fight or flight, panic attack, threat, chaos, reaction, 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 survival, 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 oh my God, oh my God, my God, to, and then I'm just gonna sit with it. I don't know for how long, not that long. Okay, you ready? Here we go. I have not figured out how to get in this thing without hooking my leg around my arm, so here we go. Oh my god, okay, hold on. That, that, okay, I would not recommend that. I would not recommend that because that um, that actually makes you nervous. Okay, Oakley, I, like I hurt my hip the other day and normally I'm not that bad at getting in. Oh. <sighs> okay. Okay, that's it. Come on, Mom. How about a little bit more cheering, okay? Okay, you got it, Mom. You got this. I'm grabbing the towel. You're killing it. I think I just got over the one minute mark. Uh, yeah, you did. How far have I in? I don't know, there's a timer on the thing. How long does it take? Yeah, I think you're probably like a minute 10. Do you feel different? Mm hmm Do I look different? Yeah. I like actually feel calm. Yeah, you look calm. It's, it's weird because I know I'm in this freezing cold water and uh, my thoughts are literally, I'm just like, I'm okay. And I think you probably saw in the beginning, there was that panic a little bit and the breathing was not under control. And I'm signaling to my nervous system that I'm okay. Like the alarm did not, does not need to be sounding right now. Now you'll notice that my arms are probably super flushy. 
Right now, what we recommend is that you get into a stance so that we engage the quads and you... It helps that it's warmer today. Oh. And there you have it. There you have it. Any questions? Any questions? No, okay. Is somebody yelling at me? I think they're yelling at their kids. There you go. Pretty beautiful view, huh? Oof. Now we're inside and see how red I am in terms of how fleshy I am. Now, again, my friends that, you know, have beautiful darker skin than me, um, they just feel, they, they look literally radiant. Like they're just glowing. There's an energy to it. And this is like your blood coming back into that part of your body. I feel so energized. I feel like, woo, I could do anything because of the, like, I don't know if it's adrenaline. I don't know if it's dopamine, probably all of it. Um, but that's the longest I've ever gone. Um, and I think if you rewatch it, you can tell the moment I go from freaking out to under control. And then there's a moment where I go from being in control to actually relaxing into a state of being calm. I have never achieved that. That was pretty cool that I could bring you on that ride. All right, there you go. Cold exposure. <laughs> and of course, if you like this video, you're going to love this one next.